Good morning. Good morning. Hold on. Turn you on. That was a test. Good morning. Good morning. I think we can do better. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Happy birthday. Also, thank you. <laughs> I'm still alive. And so are we. Welcome to East Side United Methodist Church. It is a great day to be in worship together. It is a great day to feel the sunshine and the warmth of the sun this morning. And so we're so glad to have you all here this morning. Just a couple of announcements, and I'm trying to make sure I don't lose any of them. There's a new member class directly following worship-ish at Aldersgate, so you know if you'll be there or not. But if you are interested in joining Eastside, make sure to talk to Pastor Brandon. There are a few announcements on the bulletin, and you'll see a calendar outlining all the things that you need to remember. Am I missing anything else? Okay. Well, we are just glad to be together in worship this morning, so let us turn our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to God this morning. Please stand as you are able, in body, mind, or spirit, and join in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Good and gracious God, you created us in your image. Every one of us is made in your likeness. Help us to worship you alone, Lord. Let us not make idols out of the good things you have created. We see your handiwork in every one of your works but you alone are the center of our worship and praise. May our worship and praise be pleasing to you this day and every day. And remain as you are and join in singing our opening hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, and that's printed in the insert.
You may be seated. This morning, as we prepare to go to God in prayer, I will invite a time of silence um, to lift up any joys or any concerns that you have on your heart to God. And as before we pray, I want to invite our children to Children's Church, children ages three to fourth grade, to meet Linda Ray in the back for a worship experience of their own. And as the children are going out for their experience, I just want to remind us of who we are this morning, who we are as a community of faith, that we believe in God's unconditional love, and you can see this on the front of our bulletin, that we stand for inclusion for all and embrace people regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, race, ethnicity, age, faith, and history. And as we um, go into this time of prayer, things that I hope are before us in our prayers this morning and and in our daily lives, our prayers for our uh, trans community and all the bills that are up against them and against drag. And um, there'll be some information about how we can get involved as a, as a community of faith who believes in inclusion. And then as we've entered into Black History Month, there's a lot of work to be done on inclusion and in its holy work. And it is our work to do alongside God. So let us go to God in prayer. God of great love, we are so grateful that we, your people, have this community of love to experience your love from one another, to experience your, the knowledge that we are your beloved children. We thank you for this safe place. We thank you for those good and beautiful gifts that you put into our lives. And we take these moments of silence to lift those good and great things up to you now in Thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for your constant presence with us through the dark valleys and through the high mountains. You've not promised this to be an easy life, but you've promised to be with us. And so we lift up those things on our hearts that are weighing us down, that need a little more of your love and your light. God of ages past and God of today, we come to you knowing that you are the God that gathers us together like a mother hen gathers her chicks. We know that you are a God who promised to always be with us, to walk with us. Grant us courage to stand and speak against things that are evil, that are oppressive, that are against your beloved community. Grant us courage to stand up when things are wrong, to be the people you've called us to be, to be co-workers with you in this kingdom that you've called us to be a part of in the here and now. May we have that courage we ask for, that we may be the light of the world that you call us to be. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 31. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they had handed them, him and made it into an idol, cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I might destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of, his Lord, of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out? to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. That's the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? Do not be angry, my Lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. They gave me the gold, I threw it into the fire, and out came a calf. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. What a story. For 40 days and 40 nights, Moses was gone. Let's take a moment to put ourselves in today's scripture text. 
the people had no clue what was happening on top of the mountain. I imagine they thought Moses had been burnt up by now. All the while, Moses is with God, receiving instructions on how we might live loving lives with God and with one another. The people turn from Moses in return for a false God, a God who they could control. The covenantal relationship between the people of Israel and God was broken, and a golden calf was created. God looks down the mountain and sees what has been done and is angry, sending Moses back to the people and threatening to punish them for all the ways they have let God down. But boldly and courageously, Moses intercedes on behalf of the people, reminding God of all that God has brought them through and God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that they would inherit a land and become a great nation. The Lord listened to Moses and the people's rejection of God is not the end of the story sharing with us a testimony to the, to the Israelites' experience of a grace-filled God. I wonder what it was like to be freed from slavery, the only thing you knew, only to be lost in the wilderness. The season of winter and the world lying dormant is nature's waiting. As you know, this week's weather covered us in ice. Our backyard is surrounded by a large wooded area where layers of ice covered trees, the ground, and everything around us seems to be dead. Through the brown, frozen world surrounding us, I can begin feeling weary until I remember that nature is simply lying dormant. We know that underneath the brown, crunchy leaves and the ice, the earth is resting and preparing to burst out with new life. The word dormant means to sleep, and it's an integral part of life. The very act of stopping is necessary to restore our whole selves. There's a different type of work that happens in the dormant seasons. And that work in the waiting moves us into new life. When we are stuck in the waiting or feel like we don't have a direction, we can often fall back on our idols. The idols of our lives can show up in the form of distractions or our own attempts at control. Those things that cloud our view of the world in the way that God designed for us to experience it and live in it. For us and many of us, those idols can look so different. I wonder what are the ways that we create our own little gods instead of remaining faithful to where God is calling us. Aaron reminds us that we can't have it both. We can't have our cake and eat it too. A little of God and a little of the golden calf. Many times in the face of difficulty or unknown, humans can have a tendency to go back to what we know, to what is comfortable or what we feel we can control. It's in the creating of our own ways around God that it's easy to lose our focus on following God and we begin following in our own ways. Time and time again, God asks us to remember. In today's text, Moses reminds God to remember and reminds us as well. O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? It's a powerful practice to remember where God has brought us and who God is. Moses is a model for the church to bear witness to God's faithfulness and compassion, seeking reconciliation with God and one another. This week as I was preparing for 
today's sermon, my planning, got turned upside down by winter weather and then sickness, resulting in canceled day school for my son Micah. So there was some extra screen time, and Winnie the Pooh's grand adventure accompanied Micah and I as we snuggled in from the cold, icy weather. In this movie, Winnie the Pooh is told by his best friend, Christopher Robin, that he will be going away for a little while, and then he hopes for him to remember him in these words. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you'll ever know. Christopher Robin leaves and Pooh goes on his adventures, getting into all sorts of trouble that he needs help getting out of, and he keeps seeming to forget what it was that Christopher Robin told him to remember. Oh, how we get into deep, deep trouble when we take so many things into our own hands and forget who God is and who we are as God's children. In the end, through all the many twists and turns, Winnie the Pooh is able to remember the words of his friend Christopher Robin, bringing us back to his perspective of things that were true and life-giving all along. So as a mother of a toddler, my heart has hung alongside this story, alongside the, the narrative of the Israelites and their journey with God through the wilderness. Their fear and their frustration is valid. All of us have been in spaces that are a new sort of difficulty, a challenge we didn't expect, a long waiting. They were hungry and thirsty. They were tired. We can empathize with them in this feeling. We can be challenged by the ways we watch them become overcome and misdirected by fear. We may be tempted to create our own ways of being and doing. Instead, may we ask God, God, what are you doing? How might we join in your redemptive and loving work in the world? What do we do in the seasons of wilderness and waiting? How do we remain faithful to God? In this time as a church, in the reality of this in-between space, worshiping in a middle school or an elementary auditorium, I often wonder what God is up to in all of this. Like Moses and God at work on the mountaintop, perhaps we can't quite see what God is up to, but we can remember where God has brought us. We can trust that God is present and will see us through. We can be in honest dialogue with God about it. One thing I love about this text is that Moses talks back to God on the mountain, and it gives us permission to be honest with God too. God can take it. God will listen. God may even change God's plans. In today's text, the Israelites forgot their narrative of emancipation, and they can no longer remember their rescue. I hope we might remember all of the ways that God has and continues to redeem us, and that this season of waiting is a type of deeper work beneath the soil of our lives, our neighbors, our community, and our church. It's a great opportunity to ask God where we are called to next, how we are to worship God with our hearts and our lives, and to be the type of people that God desires for us to be. There is a whole community surrounding us with hurting people who I hope might come to know and experience the deep and expansive and inclusive love that God has for them. And we get the chance to offer them that gift when we live out our love for God and one another. That continues on through so many ways through you, East End. May we remember 
all God has done and all God has led us through so far, and in God is still leading us on. May we turn from creating our own ways and instead follow God's way of compassion and justice and love. As we seek to melt down the idols we have created and to join in on all that God is doing, may we also hear the words of Christopher Robin as if they were the words of God. You are braver than you believe stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you ever know. Amen. My friends, as we move into a time of our offering, may we remember that God has gifted us with so many good, good things. And may we give God out, may we give generously to God in response to our love for God. I want to invite our ushers to bring forth the plates. God, we thank you for the many, many good gifts that you give us. We remember who you are, remember where you've brought us. We give generously to you and your ministry today and every day. Amen.
Like the Israelites, we can be a stiff-necked people. We can be impatient, grow weary. We've been hungry, thirsty, and tired. Let us confess all these things and more by saying together our common confession, which is printed in your bulletin. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Our likeness and God's image is renewed at the dawn of every morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, I invite you to exchange signs of reconciliation and grace and Christian love to one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thanks. Peace be with you. All right, before we get started with our great Thanksgiving today, I want to make a, a quick apology. We noticed that no matter how many times we proofread something, sometimes we miss something. And the responses, uh, the sung responses, are not listed in your insert today. So if you're new with us or you're not familiar with our responses, just kind of hang on and see if you can pick it up as we go. And, uh, there, and, uh, or just listen to us, you know. Um, but God is with us in this moment anyway. So... Let's come to God and open up this beautiful table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, all loving God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We're celebrating being delivered from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ, is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father God, now and forever. And now, with the assurance that we are all indeed children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught by saying, Our God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As I'm giving instructions, I'm going to invite those that are helping serve to come forward at this time. In the United Methodist Church, we practice what we call an open table. And that means anyone and everyone is welcome to this table. Anyone who wishes to experience God's grace known through the God that we know in Jesus Christ. No matter who you are, where you come from, who you love, no matter what, you are welcome at this table. Just so you know, all of our elements are gluten-free, so if you have gluten sensitivities, you can partake in any of these elements. What we will have is two stations down front here. We'll ask uh, the choir to come first and receive, and then after the choir has received, we will have folks come through the middle aisle and receive at one of two stations, and then you will head back to your seats by the outer aisle. 
If you need to be served in your seat, Pastor Joanna will be coming around with elements as well. And then she will also go and serve the nursery and uh, probably Derek as well over there. So that is how we will partake in communion today. The table is now open. This bread is broken for you and for all of us and for the world. And this is indeed the cup of salvation poured out for us and for many for the forgiveness of sins and for our blessing. Now, come and feast at this holy banquet.
for that. And now, if you would, pray with me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, before our closing hymn, I'd like to invite Sheila and Gil Gilliland to come up front. And I'm going to invite Naomi to come up front. And can we get a mic for Naomi? Thank you.
And I think now that they're moving to Florida, we'll probably only see the old apartment once a week now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably that's probably the right. So, but you know what we just heard too is a wonderful testimony to the connectional nature of our United Methodist Church. And sometimes people wonder right now in all that our church, the United Methodist Church, is going through. And if you don't know, we're going through some difficulties right now. Now, while we want to still be United Methodist, that's a beautiful love that that uh, that you all. We're drawn here, my friends, from another church in another time, in another place, and that's the beauty of being a church that's connected across many spaces and places. Thank you. Thank you. And now, if you will stay as you are, since you already, most of you have already risen, and let's sing, shall we gather, wait, wait what, are, what are we singing today? I didn't change it in the script. Be thou my vision. Yep. who are following after the ways of God, even as we may be in seasons of heartbreak or waiting or grief. We may feel lost, but God is at work and God's love is everlasting. So may we go and live that love and justice and compassion in our world today and tomorrow and forevermore. 